What do you make of this initial refloat? Is it earlier than you expected? Yes, good morning. Uh, yes, it's probably a little bit earlier than uh, what we had expected. Um, it seemed that the, the, the ship had been stuck on both ends, uh, and indeed they've been able to move it, but it's a little bit too early to see uh, when the canal is going to be cleared. So it's one thing to refloat the ship, it's another thing to completely clear the canal for traffic. Um, Hugo, good morning to you. Morning. Um, if it's freed, um, how quickly do you think, um, and obviously this is all speculative at this stage, we've got 450 ships backed up, we understand. Give me a sense of how long it takes to unclog 450 ships through the Suez Canal. Your tentative timeline. Tentative timeline, probably two weeks, because the canal was used uh, pretty much at full capacity. So you, you need to understand that whatever has been uh, uh, accumulated so far will uh, take time to clear. So probably two to three weeks, uh, in my opinion. We're just getting some headlines breaking now. Egypt aiming to allow ships to cross the Suez Canal again on Monday. Um, rates for super, tanker, super tankers, Hugo, have thus far been unaffected. Will that stay the same now that potentially we could see the canal open up? I think that they will not be uh, totally unaffected. They will uh, move marginally up. But we are in a situation in the tanker market where uh, we had overcapacity. And so uh, this phenomenon, um, there is about 11 to, to 12 percent of the, the worldwide uh, oil traffic that goes to the canal um, is not something that can lift massively the rate like many in other sector or at any uh, other point when the supply is uh, more constrained. Talk to us about the rates for super tankers. Um, was there a spike? Were they unaffected? How do you think pricing? Will we see any kind of structural consequence to this in terms of pricing, Hugo? No, I th as I just mentioned, I mean, the, the rates were uh, pretty subdued. Uh, so we were trading uh, below break even. And that's due to the fact that we have lost uh, uh, f uh, 5 million barrels a day of consumption due to cor coronavirus restrictions. Uh, and so uh, this, uh, this incident like on the Suez Canal uh, is unlikely to affect massively the rates. I mean, we've seen already uh, last week some marginal movements up. Uh, we're likely to see that again uh, this week. But I don't believe that uh, it will uh, it will bring the rates uh, to a phenomenal uh, levels like we saw last year, for instance. We're talking about rates, but even more so, how has this impacted your business directly? Well, I mean, obviously, we had a, a couple of ships that uh, were uh, about to take the canal, so we have rerouted them. Uh, I think we are not the only ones. Uh, a number of ships had the, taken the decision. And, you know, it's always a question of, you don't know when it's going to be free up and when it's free up you don't know when the traffic uh, will be lighter again to uh, to allow you to cross so taking this decision is basically taking a decision to take seven to eight or even nine more days to go around africa uh, to uh, wherever you want to go and, and and you know it's probably either china in one uh, direction or, or europe in the other direction so it's not light decision because once you are en route uh, you're not going to do a u-turn and, and try to retake the, right. the Suez canal so so uh, basically, you are uh, shrinking the global capacity when you do that. Uh, and that's something that uh, we will feel for the many days to come, not only in our sector, maybe more in sectors where uh, the supply was already uh, constrained. So people uh, around the world need to understand that it's uh, it's anywhere between 10 and 15 percent of the worldwide maritime traffic. And the, the maritime traffic is responsible for 80 percent of the trade. So uh, whatever you, you want to get in just in time may completely disturb your uh, supply chain. But here, herein lies the point, Hugo. You've just given us very exact percentages that the, the, the input and, and, and the output. The World Trade Organization chief economist says we're overestimating the dangers. It's a great photo opportunity. But I wouldn't get too excited about the daily impact of trade. This one event, one event, one ship closed that scale of trade around the world. Do you think there will be a longer lasting consequence where people look at alternatives to Suez seriously? Seriously, uh, no. There is uh, there is two or three choke points uh, around the world. You have the Suez Canal, you have the Panama Canal, you probably the Strait of Hormuz uh, specifically for uh, crude oil. Um, and uh, what is the alternative? You know, you, you, you can build more ships and systematically go uh, through the ocean, not through the canals. 
uh, I mean, that's not uh, that's not valid. I mean, people will continue to uh, to use the, the Suez Canal. There may be additional work to widen it in the future. I mean, they've done some major work uh, a few years back. Same was true for uh, the Panama Canal, well, that they've enlarged, uh, they've even uh, made a second canal. Uh, but I don't believe that's, uh, that's imminent. I mean, you have uh, one accident uh, every so many years. And so it's not like if it was happening every day. It is true, of, however, that the ships are becoming larger and larger. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the width of the canal, uh, it is more and more difficult to navigate through it. But here we're talking about a bit that is particularly narrow for uh, a relatively short distance compared to the overall uh, length of the canal.